Now, this is the third of the series on answering a standard quiz set. So in this particular video, I'm going to teach you how to answer a practical regression question when it comes to statistics for business decisions. Now, the question says that the following regression output shows the relationship between quantity supply and the determining factors. That is the price, the tax rate, the input prices, and then the wages. And you see from the question, every element has been defined in brackets, okay? So tax rate, quantity supply, everything has been defined in brackets. Take the tables and answer the questions which follow. So this summary output here talks about the multiple correlation. This also talks about the R square. This is the adjusted R square. This is the standard error of the R square. And then this is the number of observations. The ANOVA here is basically to test the significance of the R square or to test the overall significance of the model. All right, so this figure here is the sum of squared regression. This is the sum of squared error or the sum of squared residual. Then this is the total sum of square and all that. Then this is the mean sum of squared regression, mean sum of squared error and all that. And this is the F test. And this is the probability value of the F test, which is used to test the significance of the R square. Then these are the regression independent variables plus their coefficient, standard error, t-statistics, p-value, then the confidence interval lower and upper 95. A, state the null and alternative hypothesis to test the joint significance of all the regression coefficients and conclude on the hypothesis. Now, here, Joint significance of all the regression is talking about the R square, okay? So the null hypothesis of the R square is that R square is equal to zero or it is not significant. Now the alternative here is quite different. The reason why the alternative is different is that you see, we can all assume that if the null is equal to, the alternative should be not equal to. But one thing about the R square is that we impose a certain restriction about non-negativity. So R square can never be negative. That's why the alternative says greater than zero. So here, we are going to use the p-value approach. Now, if you are using p-value to test hypothesis, we all know that when the p-value is less than the alpha, the, the null hypothesis is rejected. And when the p-value is greater than the alpha, the null hypothesis is not rejected, right? So we pick the p-value of the f-test, which is here. Now, some of us have a problem with interpreting this in the normal form because this is a standard form. Now, 1.22125 e raised to the power negative 0 0.5 shows that we have 0 0.56 zeros. Sorry, it's e raised to the power negative 57. I'm sorry. e raised to the power negative 57. So it means we have 0 0.56 zeros before the 1, 1, before the 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 5. So mean that thing is even far, like it's, it's, if you round it, it's like zero. So here, we say that since the p-value of the F test is this, and it's less than the alpha of 0 0.05, the null hypothesis is rejected. And this means that the R square is significant. B, provide an interpretation of the coefficient of determination or the R square. So the R square was 0 0.7869. If you, if you convert to percentage, that would be 78.69%. So the interpretation is that 78.69% of the variation in quantity supplied can be explained by the variation in the independent variables or the determining factors. C, state now an alternative hypothesis to test the significance of the individual regression coefficient and conclude on the hypothesis. Now, remember, when it comes to regression and correlation, and the hypothesis, they are default. They are by default. We don't look at whether it's a statistical hypothesis or it's a claim or whatever. When it comes to testing significance of the individual regression coefficient, the default null hypothesis is that each coefficient is not significant, or the beta is equal to zero. And then the alternative is that each coefficient is significant, or the beta is not equal to zero. Now. This means that if we are using the t-value approach, 
right? It means I want to draw something like this. And anytime we have a large sample in statistics, we use a critical T of two. Sample is, some people will suggest 1.98, but if you want to be more fitting, two is okay, two is fine, but 1.96, sorry, 1.96 is so good, right? So here we have T, the minus bound to be minus 2.0, then the positive bound to be T is equal to 2.0. This means that anytime you compute our T and it is positive and it's greater than 2.0, the null hypothesis will be rejected and then the beta will be significant. If you compute T and it's negative and it's also less than minus 2.0, the null hypothesis will be rejected and we will conclude that the beta is what significant. That is using the T value approach. So essentially, let's go here. The T value for the intercept is minus 0.401. It is my, it's negative anyway, but it's not less than minus two. It's actually greater than minus two. So for the intercept, we will fail to reject the null and conclude that the beta naught is not significant. When it comes to the price, look at the T value of the price, 20.63258. Right, it is positive and it's more than the positive bound of two. T critical of two is more than that place. So here we reject the null and say that the coefficient of price is significant. Tax rate. Tax rate, the T value is minus 2.259061. It is negative but it's also less than the negative bound of minus two. So here, we are going to reject the null hypothesis concerning the coefficient of tax rate and say that it is significant. Then the T value for IP input prices, even though it is negative, it's not less than minus two, it's actually greater than minus two. So here, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the T value, sorry, the coefficient of input prices it's not significant. Then finally, wages. Wages is 4.7. It is positive, and it is greater than the critical bound of 2. So here to reject and conclude that the beta for wages is significant. Essentially, you can use the p-values. It will yield the same conclusion. So the, 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 the golden rule for p-value is that when your p-value is greater than the alpha, we fail to reject. When it's less than the alpha, we reject. So here, for intercept, the p-value is 0 0.68869, which is greater than 0 0.05 as the significance level. We fail to reject and say that intercept is not significant. For the price, 0 0.00009. It's far lesser than 0 0.05. So we reject the now and conclude that the coefficient of the price is significant. Tax rate 0 0.02511. It is less than 0 0.05. So here also we reject and conclude that the tax rate, the coefficient of the tax rate is significant. Input price is 0 0.43995. Um, here also, once it is greater than the alpha level of 0 0.05. We fail to reject and conclude that the coefficient of input price is not significant. Then finally, the wages 0 0.00004 is less than 0 0.05. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the coefficient of wages is significant. So that's another way we can check significance. The last way, you can use the confidence interval here. This one, the last way is to use the confidence interval. Now, how do we use the confidence interval here? We use this confidence interval that anytime the upper and lower bound, one is negative and one is positive, it means more likely your coefficient to be insignificant. So the intercept, if you use that rule, the intercept is insignificant. So for something to be significant, they must be both, the lower and upper 95, they must be both positive or both negative. 
and one is positive and one is negative, there's more chance that the thing will not be significant, right? Okay, so you can also use that to check the significance level. And then, um, finally, we can go through this. So I've explained to you why each is significant, why each of them is not. So as I scroll through, you can just read it and then um, know why some of them is significant and some of them is not. Okay, so essentially, you can take your time, pause the video, and look at how it was concluded upon, right? So I've explained that already in detail. So this for beta 2, this is for beta 2, the conclusion is here. This is for beta 3, the conclusion is here. And then we have the beta 4 and all that. The final question. Write a brief explanation in each case. Sorry, with a brief uh, with a brief explanation in each case. Determine the type of errors that may have been committed in C above. If evidence from the population from which the sample was taken shows the following. Now, class, before we move on, right? Know that the null hypothesis for each beta is what? Beta is equal to zero. So the null hypothesis shows that the beta is not significant or Whatever be the independent variable, it doesn't affect the dependent. That's the mean of beta is equal to zero. It means the independent variable does not affect the dependent, right? So I, price strongly influences quantity supply. So here is the case, all the null hypothesis says that the independent doesn't affect the dependent. So when we say evidence from population shows that price strongly influence quantity supplied, it makes the null hypothesis false. Now, the price, was it rejected or we failed to reject? Now, when you come to price, right? P-value was 0 0.0009, so it means we rejected a null hypothesis, which per evidence from population, it was false. So it means we have rejected a false null hypothesis, so there is no error. I, I, tax revenue has no connection with quantity supply. That's the II. Now, per the II, if you compare it to the null hypothesis, the null says that whatever be the independent variable it doesn't have any relationship or it doesn't predict the dependent. So if you compare the II to the null hypothesis, it makes the null hypothesis true because they are in line. It says tax revenue does not have any connection with quantity supply. So this makes the null hypothesis true. Now, with tax revenue, was it rejected or we failed to reject? Looking at the p-value, the null hypothesis was rejected. It means we have rejected something through, and that makes it type one error. I, I, I. Input prices affect quantity supply. So if you compare this to the null hypothesis, we say it doesn't affect, it makes the null hypothesis false. Now, input prices, was it rejected or we failed to reject? The input price, this is the p-value, which was far more than 0 0.05, so it means we failed to reject. And technically, we have failed to reject a false null hypothesis. So we have type two error. And then finally, wages do not affect quantity supply. So of course, if you compare this to, if you compare this to the null hypothesis here, it makes this null hypothesis true, right? Now, wages, did we reject or we fail to reject based on the p-value? Yeah, which is far less than 0 0.05, we rejected a null hypothesis. And it means we have rejected a true null hypothesis, and then that will be type one error. So this brings us to the end of the discussions on um, the sample quiz. I believe this will give us any idea when it comes to any statistics question. And uh, as a teacher of statistics, I'll urge all my viewers to really understand the concept because in whatever university you are, you may not have same questions or sometimes you may have same questions but maybe the figures might have changed a little. So what is important is that we understand the concepts when we discuss um, exam, I'm sorry, quiz questions like this.
So um, I would like you to um, recommend the video. Um, I would like you to share, subscribe, and click the like button. Let us have your feedback and um, so that we can bring you more content. Um, thank you very much. And thank you for staying with us throughout the discussion. Thank you.